Welcome to ECA Limu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the introduction to this topic, heat transfer, we discussed modes of heat transfer, and we said we have only three modes of heat transfer. The first one was conduction, and we have discussed conduction in solids, liquids, and gases. The second one was convection, and then the third one was radiation. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss convection, but we are going to realize that convection is only experienced in substances which can flow, that is liquids and gases, and the convection cannot be experienced in solids. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain what is convection and where convection is experienced, explain the types of convection current, explain convection in liquids, and then finally, convection in gases. So what is convection? Convection is the process by which heat is transferred through a fluid. Remember, when we were discussing particulate nature of matter, we said a fluid is a substance, is a substance that can flow, a substance that can flow easily, and substances which can flow easily, we said they experience what we call Brownian motion, they experience Brownian motion. And substances which experience brown and motion among the three states of matter, we said are liquids and gases. Therefore, it's very important to note that, very important to note that solids, solids don't transfer heat, don't transfer heat by convection. So it's only liquids and gases which can transfer heat through convection but solids don't transfer heat through convection now remember fluids experience brown and motion they are always in a continuous random motion therefore for convection to take place these substances must move so convection we can also define it as the mode of heat transfer which involves the actual the actual movement of fluids within a system so whenever there is actual movement of a fluid and in the process heat is transferred then we call that one convection current now we have two types of convection current the first one is natural convection in natural convection it involves a change in density of a fluid with the temperature. Remember, we said density is influenced by mass per unit volume. Therefore, if you have a fluid inside a container like this one, this is a fluid, let's say water, let's say you have water in a container, which is called cold water. And then you introduce some heat at the base here. What will happen? The water which is at the base will gain heat. It will gain heat. And when it gains heat, its temperature will increase. When temperature increases, remember from thermal expansion, we said volume will increase. Volume will increase. And when volume increases, Look at this, if you increase volume, you decrease the density. So when the volume of this uh, liquid at the base increases, its density will be very low. And when density becomes low, it will rise up because now it's less dense. Then the water which is at the top, the water at the top is cold. Its density is high, high density. Then the water at the top now will move down, it will move down to replace the liquid or the water which has risen up due to decrease in density. 
Now, when there is change or the, there is movement of a fluid due to change in, the, in temperature, in that case, we call that type of convection a natural convection. Then we have what we call forced convection. In forced convection, it involves mixing a hot liquid and a cold liquid by an external a stirring or using a fan or a pump. For example, if you have a container here and it contains hot water, it contains hot, hot liquid. And then now you introduce a cold liquid is called the liquid, called liquid, and then you stir. When now you stir, the liquid which is hot, its volume is high, and the particles are more apart from each other, they will move up. The particles in this case will move up from down, and then the one which are very cold will move down, and this one is caused by stirring. So this type of convection now, call it forced. This is forced convection. It involves mixing of a, a hot and a cold liquid by stirring. But the one where there is change in temperature and then the current is moving up and down, in this case, this is natural. Natural convection. Now, what experiment can you perform to prove that a liquid experience convection current where a hot liquid moves up and a cold liquid moves down. What you do, you take a beaker, you can see on the screen this is a beaker, and then you put some water inside, and then on the left hand side on, of this screen, you put purple, a crystal of purple potassium manganate 7. When you put a crystal of purple potassium manganate 7 here, then you heat just below the purple potassium manganate 7. You introduce your heat here. Now, when you heat at this point, the liquid at this point where we have purple potassium manganate 7, this liquid will move up. It will move up because its volume will increase. When volume increases, density will be low. If density is low, it means now it will move up. To, uh, it will move up. And when it moves up, it will leave some space because if it moves up, it will leave some space. If it leaves some space, a liquid from the right uh, bottom corner here will come in to occupy that space. When it comes in to occupy that space, it means where it's coming from, it's leaving a space. When it leaves a space there, then a liquid from the top here will come and occupy that space. When, it, it, when the liquid from the top come to occupy that space, it means it will leave a space there. And then now, a liquid from the right or the left up will move across to occupy that space. When it goes to occupy that space, it means it will leave a space here. And now the liquid which has been hot is the one which will occupy the space left at that point. So as you can see, this liquid will move in a clockwise direction. It will move in a clockwise direction. Now, if I can explain this better, if you have a liquid here, a container, you have a container, then you put some water inside, you put some water inside, and then now, at this point here, let me draw it using a green ink, you have a liquid here, let me use red, the one which is visible, you have a liquid there, you have another liquid here, you have a liquid there, and then you have a liquid there. Now, if you heat, let me use this red at this point. If you heat here, this liquid will gain temperature, its volume will increase, density will decrease, it will move up on this point. When it moves up, it will leave an empty space where it is living. Then a liquid from the left will come and occupy that space. When the, left, the one from the right come to occupy that space, it will leave a space here. Then a liquid from the right up will move down to occupy that space. When it comes to occupy that space, it will leave a space up there. The liquid from the 
left up will move across to occupy that space which has been left then it will leave an empty space here where the liquid which rose due to decrease in density will occupy so in this way you can see the liquid will be moving in a clockwise direction and that's what we call convection current and now what if we heat at this point here what if we heat here on the right hand side if we heat on the right hand side let me use the black ink now the liquid will gain heat its temperature will increase then its density will decrease it will move up when it moves up it will leave an empty space the liquid from the left down will move across to occupy that space when it leaves to occupy that space it means it will leave an empty space here the liquid from left up will move down to occupy that space when it moves down it means it will leave an empty space here then the liquid from the right uh, up will move across to occupy that space it means it will leave an empty space there where the liquid which rose due to decrease in density will come and occupy and so in this case you can see the fluid now is moving in anticlockwise direction if you hit at the right side it will move anticlockwise anticlockwise direction if you hit on the left side it will move clockwise direction that is very important to note now this movement is what we call convection current so what causes convection current remember we mentioned that convection is caused when a liquid is heated and when a liquid is heated he said it moves up and the cold one which is on the, at the top will move down now i want us to remember what we discussed in density we said density is equals to mass over volume and i want us to take a very small case we are going to take a mass which is a constant let's say a mass of a liquid which is 10 kilogram then we want to take three sets of volume volume one let's take it to be one uh, cubic meter one cubic meter then volume two we want to take two cubic meter then volume three we are going to take five cubic meter five cubic meter and now in this case if we calculate the density of these three uh, volumes mass is the same then it's going to be density one is equals to mass which is 10 kilograms of uh, one cubic meter then the density is going to be 10 kilograms per cubic meter density two is 10 kilograms over two cubic meter this one is going to be five kilograms per cubic meter then now density three is equals to 10 kilogram over five cubic meter which is going to be two uh, kilogram per cubic meter so as you can see when we increase the volume from one to two to three density is decreasing now if you have a liquid in a container if you have a liquid in a container like this and you heat at the bottom here this is the liquid in a container you have a liquid in a container you heat at the bottom the liquid which is at the bottom here bottom this liquid this is heat the liquid which is at the bottom will gain heat its temperature will rise and remember we said when you increase temperature of substances density decreases density decreases because when you increase the temperature they expand when you increase temperature substances expand so the liquid at the base here will expand its density will decrease it will move up because of low density the one which is at the top it's cold its volume volume is small volume is small because it has not expanded then it will move down so through that movement of up a liquid which its volume has been increased density decreased will move up a liquid which is at the top density is high volume is small moving down that's what we call convection current so convection current is caused by changing the density 
of a liquid where the more dense liquid will move down and displace a less dense liquid which will move up. So to investigate convection in gases, what you do, you take a box and make two chimneys, like in this case we have chimney Q and chimney P. Then what you do, you introduce a, a, bunny, a candle at below chimney Q. Here we have a candle, you can see it. You introduce a candle there. And then on chimney P, you put a burning straw. The function of the burning, burning straw will be to produce smoke. Remember, what we discussed earlier is that the density of smoke, when we were discussing the smoke cell experiment, we said the density of smoke is almost similar to the density of air. So if you introduce smoke at this point, this smoke at chimney P will not be moving. It will be still because the density is almost the same, so it will be settled there. Now, when you make this candle wax to light, or when you light this candle wax, this candle wax will heat, it will heat the air, heat the air here, heat air, which is above this candle wax or below Gmon Q. When it is heated, its volume, volume will increase. When the volume increases, density will decrease. When density decreases, now this gas will move up. When the gas which was here moves up, it will leave what we call an empty space. It will leave an empty space. Now this space needs to be occupied. Then the liquid which, or the gas which is on this side here now, the cold gas, cold gas mixed with smoke, mixed with smoke, they have the same density, they will move across to occupy this space here. When they come here, they will be heated, and then they will move up. That's when now you will see the smoke coming out. When it gets heated, it is, it, 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 its volume will increase, density will decrease, and then it will move up. Then more smoke will be coming to replace that one. When it reaches there, it expands, it moves up, leaves a space. More smoke comes from chimney P, get heated, moves up like that. So through that, we can prove that there's convection in gases so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will look at the application of convection in liquids and gases